Okay, so for example three, it says find the radius of convergence for this problem. Now notice here, you do have x minus a number. So in this case, our center is not zero, but two. So when you're splitting up your um, testing, you have to talk about for x equal to two and then for x not equal to two. So let's find out what's happening for x equal to two. Well, in that case, our series will become three times zero to the power n. Now for the first term, you get three zero to the power zero. Next term, you get three zero to the power one, three zero to the power two, and so forth. Now remember, this is defined as one. So three times one is three. That's our first term. Then this would be zero and zero and zero and so forth. So a bunch of zeros. So you do end up getting three. Now again, the fact that you get a value here means that the series converges. So it does converge for x equal to two. Now let's see what happens for x not equal to two. That means it stays like this and we need to use that ratio test. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 3x minus 2 to the power n plus 1 over the nth term x minus 2 to the power n. So the threes will reduce and remember how we discussed before this term will just reduce the n leaving me with um, x minus 2 to the power 1 or you can just write it as um, x minus 2, the absolute value of x minus 2. Now x could be anything. It's not like n where we know that n is always positive. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. So this is a little different, okay? And if you take the limit as it goes to infinity, because there's no n to plug in, you just end up with the absolute value of x minus 2, okay? That is the limit. But that's not really a numerical value, right? It's not just one numerical value. So I can't tell whether it's less than one or greater than one or equal to one or any of that. But what I do know is that when this value is less than one, the series converges absolutely. And that's what I'm trying to find, is I'm trying to find that R, that radius of convergence. Where is it that this converges absolutely? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this equation to find that radius, okay? So, um, and actually you don't even need to solve it. You have the radius right here. This is your radius. But what you do need to do to figure out the interval is you do need to solve it, okay? Or you could just draw a number line and add one and subtract one on both sides, okay? But what I like to do is I like to rewrite that inequality like this, and then if I add two to all three parts of this inequality, you get that x is between three and one. And so there's your interval. Your interval is going to be from one to three. Now here's the thing. Most of the times you have to figure out, well, should there be bars here? Should there not be bars here? How do we know? In this particular problem, we don't have to check the convergence or divergence of the ends. And the reason being is because this ser this value here, we just did the, lim the ratio test. This would not be, um, actually no, because if the series, e if this value equals one, it just means that this test is inconclusive. It doesn't mean that it's not convergent, okay? It means we don't know. So we do still have to test one and three to verify whether or not the um, interval should be open or half open, half closed, which half, right? Or if it's a closed interval. We have to test each endpoint separately to determine whether or not, what kind of interval this is gonna be. So what we do is we do just like we did for the center, we're gonna do something very similar for the ends. So for x equal to one, so I'm not gonna box this. I can say that r equals one and box that. We have answered the question. But if they do ask you for the interval of conversion,
questions on some of these problems, which they will, and that will also happen on the test, um, you need to be able to verify what kind of inequality this is going to be, or what kind of interval this is going to be. So for x equal to 1, my series is going to look like this. It's going to be 3, and then if I plug in 1 there, I'm going to get negative 1 to the power n. Okay. Now this is what is called an alternating series. Now if you remember the alternating series test, let's just flip back in case you don't, but there is an alternating series test that if you meet two criteria, this series will converge. Um, and we also have another one to find out whether it diverges immediately, right? Um, the nth term test says that if you take the limit of the nth term and it does not equal zero, then it diverges. And I think that one actually applies because if I take the limit as n goes to infinity of three and negative one to the power n, depending on if n is even, this is gonna actually equal three. And if n is odd, then this is actually gonna equal negative three. But in either case, we're not getting zero, okay? So the limit does not equal zero, which means the series diverges. Which means that this side of the interval is gonna stay open, okay? So I know that that is good to go the way it is. Now we just need to test the other side for three. And sometimes you get that these things do diverge on the endpoints. So it's very important that you actually test it, okay? So if I plug in three here, I'm gonna end up with three and then one to the power n. And so then if I start plugging in, or I could do the same thing as I did before actually, do the nth term test just to knock it out, right? Um, you get the limit as n goes to infinity well, it's one to the power n, which is literally always the value one. So this ends up just being the value three. You could even say, um, but this does not equal zero. So what that means is that the series diverges. And don't be so quick to say that the sum is equal to three and then be like, oh, well, we found the value for the sum so we know that the series is gonna converge. Be careful there, because not just this term is three. Remember, yes, you could simplify the series to look like this, but that doesn't mean that the sum of this is three. The sum of this is actually infinity, because every single term is the value of three. And what do you get when you do three plus three plus three plus three plus three infinitely? You get infinity, right? Okay, so you, Three is not the sum of this inner, of this series. So be very careful not to make that wrong conclusion, okay? I'm gonna erase that just because that's just my side work to make a point. But our work here is that whether I take the limit of this or I take just the limit of three, you still get zero, which means the series diverges, which means that endpoint will not have a bracket. And my interval convergence is just this okay but you'll never know if there should be a bracket on this end or that end unless you test for it so make sure that you're doing that every single time you get an r value here you have to test that interval okay and just one quick thing before in this video okay let's say i go through this whole ratio test and i find out that i end up with instead of x equal to negative two. So this is just a side note. Okay, let's say I don't end up with that. Let's say I end up with one half x minus two. Okay, well, the case is still true. This will converge, the series will converge when this value is less than one. Okay, but that doesn't mean that my radius is less than one because this side should only have the x minus c. If I can get the x minus c all by itself, that's when I'll know what the radius is, okay? So in this particular case, if that was what I ended up with, I could multiply both sides by two 
the one half would cancel here and I'd get two over there and then now I can tell you what my radius is. So I just wanted to point out because sometimes people will just assume that the radius is one because they ended up with some quantity here. But it depends on what that quantity looks like that'll tell you what your R is, okay? So you have to get the absolute value of X minus the center by itself before you can determine what that radius um, of convergence is.